and we find out that double jubilee on this scenario, we're talking about the year of multiplications. And we find that in Genesis 1, 27 and 28, which says, God blessed male and female and said unto them, be fruitful and multiply, replenish and subdue the earth and have dominion. And then we find out there's a saying, why are you not fruitful, multiplying with no dominion? Amen. But the topic we have is this. When we sin, it should drive us to forgiveness for restoration. Have you been driven? Question asked. Have you been driven? We could have just liberally said, have you been driven? But we want to let you know what make us to be driven. Amen. When we sin, it should drive us as Christians to seek forgiveness, to receive restoration. Question asked, have you been driven? Um, we had some, uh, some uh, areas that we wanted to make sure that we would understand. One is this word forgive. The Lord told me that we wanna, he wanted me to bring forth a series on forgiveness because there's so many of us harbors unforgiveness. And through harboring unforgiveness, that's one thing can send us to hell. Because the Lord said, if you don't forgive men, I will not forgive you your trespasses. Amen. We find that very liberally speak, spoken. And um, in this word, forgive, I want to give a meaning on that word. Uh, aphemi, A-P-H-I-E, M-I, aphemi, which means to release, to let loose, to dismiss, to pardon. Or to excuse. Again, forgive means to release, to let loose, to dis dismiss, to pardon, or to excuse. So in other words, I like the part where it says to excuse. So if you excuse someone for doing you wrong, then that's liberty means to forgive. And when you look at that word to excuse someone, that means that even though you may have stepped on my toes and didn't say you were sorry, I'm going to excuse you. In other words, I'm not going to hold it to your charge. That word means to, 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 to not uh, hold it to your charge. Or, uh, I'm going to dismiss it. I'm going to pardon you. And the Lord pardoned us when he took the cross for you and I. He pardoned all the things that we did against him as we done it against others. Amen. He pardoned. That means he forgave it like it never happened. Amen. So when something has been pardoned, that means you bring it forth like it never even occurred. So we got to re release it from us because unforgiveness against someone can cause us to go to hell. Amen? Because, again, we find this liberty spoken in Matthew 6, 14 and 15. He says, forgive. If you forgive men that trespasses, your heavenly Father will also forgive you. But if you forgive not men their trespasses, Neither will your father forgive you your trespasses. And that word trespass means to get on someone else's turf. Amen. So if I get on your property and you have a sign that says no trespassing, I have bypassed, I have ignored, I have disrespected and got on your, on your turf. Or uh, when we do things wrong, when we sin, we get on the devil's turf. We get on his borderline. And once we get on there, we can't expect nothing good. Amen? Because once we do, that means we ignore the area where we have been blessed to. Because once you receive Christ in your life, he blesses you in higher places. He blesses you with signs, wonders, and miracles. He also brings you to an area of prosperity and blessings. Amen? But when we even have that and we get on the devil's territory, uh, we trespass on his property line, he's subject to do anything to us that he wants. Amen? So when you get on someone else's nerves or someone get on your nerves and cause you to be upset and frustrated, then they have trespassed on your property line, which can cause you to despise them or dislike them or hate them. Or hopefully that word would not come forth because hate is a, is a hard word. Amen? But anytime you uh, get on someone else's area or someone get on your area, it caused you to look at them differently than what you would normally. Amen? So 
we got to realize, unless we forgive them, because we got to realize they're sinners. One thing a sinner do, a sinner sins. He makes mistakes. We got to realize, we got to look at them for where they are in the spiritual connotation. Amen. We got to realize they're sinners. They do what they normally supposed to do. When someone cuts us out, they're doing what they're supposed to do because they're the devil's servant. Amen. That's why the Lord called the Pharisees, you of the father, the devil, because he was a liar even from the beginning. So we got to realize it's not them, but the spirit that lives in them caused them to do the things they do. So we got to ignore them. Just like one thing that we find out in these times is pretty uh, serious is road rage. That's a very serious thing. Just like somebody cut you off, caused you to get upset. That means you feel like they just disrespected you and they cut you off. And then what happens, you get upset with them. That you are you're balling, but they're also they're balling. And you are stupidly pulled to the side, and they were pulled to the side, but you don't know what they may have. And if they are willing to cut you off or do something like that and call and calling it road rage, they subject to harm you, take your life, and, and, and don't have no remorse. So sometimes we help people cut us off, and sometimes when people do you wrong, what they do is cut you off. They cut you off, and they want to cut you off. But if we can ignore that, they can't cut us off. Amen? So if someone cut in front of you to literally try to cut you off, that means they disrespecting you to make you pull to the side so they can harm you. So if we ignore that and keep on driving anyway, guess what? You're going to get blessed. Amen? Okay. Now, another thing I'd like to bring forth is that uh, 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 Mark 11 and 24. Let's go there for a moment. We're going to look at just a couple of verses in Mark 11 and 24. For these reasons, I'm telling you, whatsoever you ask in prayer, believe, trust, be confident that it's granted to you, that it is granted to you, and you will get it. In other words, also in the, in the uh, regular King James Version, it says it's different. Let's go in the regular King James Version of Mark 11 and 24. Okay. Therefore, I say unto you, what sort of things you desire, desire, that means not something you need, your desires. You may desire an ice cream. You may desire anything. That means something that you want, but it's not really a need. Amen. So he's blessing you not only in your needs, according to Philippians 4 and 19, where it says, where Paul said, for my God shall supply all of my needs according to his riches in glory, through Christ Jesus. We're not talking about needs. We're talking about desires. So therefore, I said, whatsoever things you desire, when you pray, believe that you receive them, and you shall have them. So even what you desire, when you pray, believe you receive them, and the Lord says, you shall have them. So even if your desires come forth, even if it's a thing that you really don't, and the Lord already knows, he promised to supply your needs. But he can go even beyond that when he can take care also your desires because it's things that we desire that's bad for us. But the Lord loves you so much, he can give you the desires of your heart. Amen. So when you, things you desire, even when you pray, just believe that you receive them and you're going to have them. Amen. But it didn't stop there. Let's go to the next verse. And verse, uh, next verse 25. And when you stand praying, now why did he say this? Because he's letting us know this is not the end of the story. Because sometimes we stop right there. Okay, what sort of things I desire when I pray, believe I receive them, and I shall have them. No, but it's more to that. And he says, and, that word and is a conjunction. It links in to another saying. It don't stop right there. It could have been a period, and then he could have started something else. But he said, and when you stand praying, forgive. If you have art against any. So that means, after you even, the things that you desire, when you pray, believe them, that you shall have them and you shall have them. And then he says, and when you stand praying, because there's going to be a time that you're going to pray. When you stand praying, forgive if you have ought against any, that your Father also is in heaven, may forgive you your trespasses. The, uh, when you stand praying, amen, forgive. That word forgives come right back up. If you have ought against any, that means if you have dislike, if you have a, 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 a something that you are not happy with on someone else, forgive them. 
You're not happy with the way they talk to you. You're not happy with the way they walked over you. You're not happy with the way they ignore you. You're not happy when they, when they look like they just didn't regard who you are and what you stood for. Amen. He said, if, they have, if, you, if you have all against any, that your Father also, which is in heaven, may forgive you your trespasses. Verse 26. But conjunction comes back. Keep the meaning going. It didn't stop right there. But if you do not forgive, neither will your Father which is in heaven forgive you your trespasses. He let us know there's a standard. There's continuation. Many times we want to stop at the good part and don't read no further. But the Lord says, he said, and when you stand praying, if you have ought against any, forgive them. That you have the Father may forgive you your trespasses. When you trespass against him or anybody else, that you may not even be aware of that you hurt somebody else. He says, and if you don't forgive them, neither would your Father which is in heaven forgive you all the time you stepped over someone else or the things you've done against someone else that is still held to your charge. See, that word forgive me that, that I want to be forgiven. I want the Lord to forgive me because there's a lot of times I mess up Knowingly or unknowingly. It's the things that we do wrong. You may offend somebody and not even be aware. You may hurt somebody's feelings and not even be aware. And I don't want to walk around offending somebody and not aware that I've hurt them to get this thing right because that's still held against me. If, if, if they are hurt by something that you did and you think that you've done the right thing, but if they hurt, you got to get that thing right. Otherwise, it's held to you. Then when you go before the Lord, when we all have to stand before him, the Lord is going to remind you, how can I, I never forgave you. Because your brother or that one that made you upset and frustrated, you did not forgive him. So I couldn't forgive you. I love to forgive you, but I can't. He cannot go against his word. He loves us, but he cannot and will not go against his word. His word will stand. Amen. Heaven and earth shall pass away for any of his word come not to pass. Amen. Amen. So the Lord is serious about his, his way of seeing things. Amen. He observes everything we do. He observes everyone we offend. He observes everyone that we step over, may step over us. He's aware of it. Don't think he don't see it. He's aware. He's an all-seeing God. That means he sees everything. He see even a little time, he even hear the murmuring in your mouth. He even hear your thoughts. Your thoughts is much greater to him than what you even imagine. Sometimes we think nobody knows what we're thinking. The Lord knows your thoughts. We can even judge over our thoughts. You know, things that you think bad of somebody and you smile in their face. That's a bad thought. Because the Lord knows that he's such the thought of man. He knows the mind of man. He knows the heart of man. And he reads the heart. So even when you're thinking bad, even though you might smile in my face, the Lord knows your thoughts. And even your thoughts are not right and pure toward him. You can be judged toward your thoughts. Unless you say, Lord, forgive me for the thoughts that I had. I got some bad thoughts in my mind, and I, re I rebuke that. Them thoughts that try to come in your mind because the devil brings some bad thoughts in your mind. Devil make you hate folks for, for no reason. Make you look at somebody for no reason. You despise them because they're blessed. Stop being despising of someone because God is blessing them. The same God that blessed them can bless you. Stop being jealous of another man's blessing. Stop being envious of what someone else has. Say, Lord, I thank you for blessing. I've learned to thank God for blessing others. Lord, thank you for blessing that brother. That brother deserved that. He deserved that. It was so much he may have been gone through that I can never even imagine. Thank you for blessing him. And the more you thank others and God blessing them, he's going to bless you. See, the Lord judges the heart of man. He sees where your thoughts are. Your thoughts are his ways. It's like the heavens to the earth. Your ways are not like his ways. His ways are much greater than your ways. He's a way maker. He's a mind regulator. He's a heart fixer. He's a burden bearer. He can make a way when there is no way. Stop limiting God. I don't know what God is doing. I don't think even God can help me in this. Stop limiting your God. He can make a way. He'll fix it when everybody else can do their hands up. 
When everybody else says, I don't know what to do, even when the doctor says, it's nothing else we can do. Don't limit God. Don't sit there and get in a pity corner and accept it. Oh, well, they say, I got cancer. I'm fixed to die. Well, you claiming it, and if you got the Holy Spirit with you, it becomes reality. It becomes real because you can speak a thing and cause it to escalate. You can speak a blessing upon someone, and it comes to pass. Or you can curse yourself and be cursed and wonder why you're gone. I don't understand why God permit this on me. Why? Because he has given you the authority to rebuke. He says, whatever you bind on earth, Matthew 18 and 18, whatever you bind on earth shall be bound in heaven. Whatever you loose on earth shall be loose in heaven. You can bind that thing. I bind that evil thought. I bind that negative thing that he may try to plant in my mind against my sister, my brother. I rebuke that. Start talking different. Start seeing things different. See the way he see it. See, the Lord never did accept anything negative. He may have seen things that wasn't gone the way that the disciple thought it should have been. But he spoke positive on the fact. Amen. I remember that man that had a son that was a lunatic. Amen. And he went before the Lord and said, Lord, you know, this is my son that's a lunatic. A lunatic. Every time he, every time something picks him up and brings him in the fire, I then throws him in the water. And, and he's, he's trying to kill himself and all of that. And I brought him to the disciples and they couldn't do nothing about it. So I brought a desire to bring him to you. And the Lord, you know, looked at the disciples in amazement as to say, oh, thou little faith. How long must I abide with thee? And the Lord spoke to the spirit. Command that spirit to come out of that child. And don't tell no in him. And that spirit came out. And when that spirit came out, the disciples looked at the Lord and said, Lord, why couldn't we do it? Why couldn't we get it? When, when they brought him out properly, because they didn't want to let the father realize they, didn't, they wasn't what they were supposed to be. So they went to the Lord properly and said, Lord, why couldn't we do it. The Lord said, this kind only come out through fasting and praying. In other words, it's going to take commitment. It takes sincerity and realness because a spirit can recognize you if you have authority or not. Don't you know spirits know you? Remember the seven sons of Eskiva? Say, Paul, we know, and Jesus, we know who you say you are. When the seven sons of Eskiva tried to command that spirit to come out of that man, and that spirit spoke up and said, we know Paul, and we definitely know Jesus. But who you say you are? Left him naked, leaving the city running. Amen. You don't know wh- what you're dealing with. You don't know the, the, the spirit. You don't know that you don't have the Holy Ghost. Don't deal with a spirit. Even if you got the Holy Ghost, but you got to have knowledge and knowing what to do, how to bind it, and what to do, and how to bind the strong man. Amen. But we'll give it to you there on another teaching. Amen. But we're going to come out today from 2 Chronicles. Give me 2 Chronicles uh, 6, and we're going to start in verse 34. This is where our message is going to be at today. 2 Chronicles 6 and 34. Okay. The Lord speaks to his people. The Lord says, if thy people go out to war against their enemies by the way that thou shalt send them, and they pray unto thee toward this city which thou hast chosen, and the house which I have built for my name's sake, continue on, then hear from heaven their prayer and supplications and maintain their call. In other words, if they hear from heaven, go back over there on that 35 again. Let me elaborate on that. Then hear from heaven their prayers and their supplications. That means the things that they bring forth before him and maintain their cause. In other words, hold forth to that which they have the cause that God has caused them to go there. In other words, if you hold firm to my standards and my statutes. Amen. Verse 36. If they sin against you, for there's no man who does not sin. Remember that. There's no man who does not sin. There's no man who can say he don't ever make a mistake. He don't sin. He don't trespass. He's saying this. This is what I love to see in this scripture. If they sin against you, the Lord says, for there's no man who does not sin. And you are angry with them and give them to enemies who take them captive to a land far or near 
37. Yet, if they repent, that word repent means turn away in the land which they have been carried captive and turn and pray. Turn means to forgive, to turn around. See, when somebody do you wrong, you got to turn the other cheek. You got to turn around. You got to ignore it like it never happened. Amen. He says, and they have been cap carried captive and turned and prayed, saying, we have sinned, we have done wrong, and have done and dealt wickedly. Verse 38, if they return to you with all their heart and soul in the land of their captivity and pray facing their land, which you, you gave to their fathers, and toward the city which you have chosen, into the house in which I have built for your name. See how that semicolon is still there. Because it continues on. He ain't stopping. Because he's got a point making across here. Go to the next verse. Okay. Then hear from heaven your dwelling place, their supplications, and maintain their cause, and forgive your people who have sinned against you. Continue on verse 40. Now, oh my God, I beseech you, let your eyes be open and your ears attentive to the prayer offered in this temple. Continue on, verse 41. So now arise, O Lord God, and come into your resting place, you in the ark of, you, of your strength and power. Let your priests, O Lord God, be clothed with salvation, and let your saints, your zealous ones, rejoice in good and in your goodness. 42. O oh Lord, go, turn not away the face of me, your none and one. Earnestly remember your good deeds, mercy, and steadfast love for David, your servant. Remember your good deeds and your mercy and your steadfast love for David, your servant. 43. When Solomon had finished praying, the fire came down from heaven, consumed the burnt offering, and the sacrifices, and the glory of the Lord filled the house. Amen. So in other words, we see here that the Lord is emphasizing that when you go and you go against wars against any of your enemies, and you remember to forgive, and you remember to pray, and you remember to set your face toward heaven and toward the things of God, that God says he will bless you tremendously, that he will be your God, that he will rest upon you Miracles and wonders and blessings and great things. See, the Lord let us know that we're going to face difficult times. That's why he said that no man can say they don't sin. No man can say they have never sinned. No man can say that they don't keep missing the mark. Remember, Christians don't sin. We miss the mark. Amen? We miss the mark. You can either sin or miss the mark. Missing the mark means you're trying for a perfected uh, range. But sometimes we just don't get directly to the point of where we're supposed to be. So you miss the mark. We miss the mark a many times. But the Lord is so merciful. He let us know that if we even miss the mark and make a mistake and do certain things wrong, we can go to him, ask him to forgive us, forgive those who offended us. And then the Lord says, I will pour our blessings upon you. See, the Lord is observant to everything we do. He's observant to every battle that we face. And a war is not liberty saying you, you're fighting against somebody with, with, with weapons. A war can mean that you're warning your members. That means that you can have a thing going on the inside. You're constantly battling. That's what Paul says. Every time I desire to do good, evil is always present with me. There's always a constant thing within us that's always causing us to try to do the wrong thing. There's a part in you that says do the right thing, but there's a part that try to rise up in you to make you want to do the wrong thing. Amen. And the Lord is observing which are you going to follow. Are you going to follow that spirit that I've given you to let you know the right way? Are you going to allow us? Because what the enemy does, he brings trials and tribulations in our way, trying to make us stumble and make us fall. Amen so that we can come short of the glory, and that we can be ignored of the blessing that God has for us. And the Lord is observing to let you know that I'm aware of what you're going through. I will never leave you nor ever forsake you.
but I'll be with you always. And I'm not concerned about the battle that you're having. I'm concerned about how you're dealing with the battle. Are you going to allow this to change you? Or are you going to change the circumstance around you? Are you going to let it change you? Or are you going to change it? See, we got to change the things going on around us. We got the authority through Christ. See, I rebuke that. I'm not going to allow that come. I'm not going to allow the enemy to bring misery and torment in my mind and my spirit to make me miss what God has for me. God has great things for you. He allows us to go through trials and tribulations that he can bless us. He blesses us through trials and tribulations, through disappointments. The Lord see how we're going to handle disappointments, how we're going to face life, because sometimes when we can go through one little small thing, it can change our whole demeanor, our whole character change, our whole way of seeing things change. It might be a little small, tedious thing, a thing that is not big at all, but in the sight of the Lord is big, because if it changes us, it's big. But we can let it be known, you're not going to change me. So the Lord letting the people know, letting his people know, through speaking through Solomon, that this is the thing that Solomon had to acknowledge that he saw. And then he said, Lord, will you have pardon on me? Will you have mercy on me for my father David's sake? Will you forgive me? You know, I'm holding on to his greatness in you. And I know that you can bless me far and beyond. But the Lord is observing every one of us. Saying, how are you going to handle your case? How are you going to handle your situation? I permit it. Nothing happens by pretense. Nothing happens accidentally. The Lord allows it to happen. But he's observing you. How, are you ready for growth? Let me see how you're going to handle that. The way we know when a child is growing and when we see how they handle things, they do a little bit different. They start being obedient. They start lining up. Then we say, you know what? That child is growing. The same thing the Lord sees in us. He wants to see are we growing for the next state of blessing. Some of us are not ready for the blessings yet. Because we have not grown beyond that little area. It's certain things that can uh, move us. Certain things that can make you really get upset and frustrated. And the devil keeps messing with that area because he knows that way I can stop you from getting what God has for you. All I got to do is mess with that child. All I got to do is mess with that spouse. All I got to do is mess with your mother. All I got to do is mess with your dad. All I got to do is mess with that which you have so much love in. If I mess with them, I can cause you to change. But the devil's a liar. We got to let the devil know, you don't have no, no success over me. For great is he that's within me, then he that's in the world. His name is Jealous. He can't have nothing and no one before him. But the enemy would mess with that which he know really affects us, really hurts us, really moves us, really get your attention. And that's what he mess with you with. But that's the area that we got to ask the Lord to help us on. It. And remember this, when you ask the Lord to help you on certain things, it's going to come more frequently. That we just say, I remember I said, Lord, help me on traffic. Always been my problem. I can't stand a lot of traffic. Bumper to bumper, or just get the best of me. And I said, Lord, help me with this traffic. I got to learn how to deal with traffic. I mean, I can be strong in a lot of areas, but that's my weakness. That's the theory that that's the area I, 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 I always pray about. I remember I got ready to get on the highway. One car, three lanes. I'm getting to give me a girl, and that, that car came out of them two other lanes, came in with that right in front of me. I said, the devil is a liar. I said, why am I going through this? The Lord said, you ask for help and strength. I'm going to admit you to go there. Through, through your trials and tribulations, that's how you get your strength. When you ask God to help you in a certain area, it's going to be more frequent. Lord, help me deal with that child. That child going to mess with you more. Until you be able to overcome that child, you can't get your blessing. That's why the Lord says in Revelation, he that overcome it shall inherit all things. See, some things we got to overcome. There's some things we got to learn to get past to get to the blessing. There's some things that we fall short in that once it comes our way, man, we want to throw our hands up. We want to stop going to church. We want to stop reading the Bible. We want to stop praying. And the devil, he always mess in that area to get to you. Because you know if I mess in that area, you're going to break. You're going to fall. You're not going to want to go to church. You're going to blame everybody in the church. I'm not but a bunch of hypocrites. Ain't none, of them real. Ain't none of them right. Because that's what the devil likes to use. To use that little small thing that he know we've been having problems with. So we got to let the devil know, you know what? I have a problem with you, devil. Because I know you're going to always come to try to torment me, try to break me, and the Lord permits you to do things to test me. See, Job could have been bypassed a lot of stuff he was going through. 
but the law permitted it. Why? Because he was going through a test. See, he wasn't going to get his blessings until he passed the test. After he got past Ilabaz, Bildad, and Zopa, that's when the problems came. Every one of them, you ain't what you make out of me, Joe. You know, I mean, all your children is dead, all your oxen and all your asses and all your camels are dead. And you still got tendency to serve God. Even his own wife said, you ought to curse God and die. And Job said, you talk like one of the foolish women. The good Lord giving the good Lord taking away. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Even though I know the skin worm destroyed this old body, I know one day I shall see God. It'll pay to build that in Zopa. Still that let him know you're not all you make out to be. But Elihu, Elihu came forth and says, you got to realize, Job, you're not all what you make out to be. There's one mightier than you that controls the elements, that controls the world that has a world in his hand. You can't do nothing without him. And Job had to listen. And then, then after the Lord has his spokesman to speak on his behalf, then the Lord says, now, Job, unless you speak with your three friends, with all their folly, I'm going to destroy them. I'm going to kill them unless you pray for them. And the Bible said when Job prayed for his three friends, the Lord turned back the captivity of Job, turned them back from being captivated because he was tested by his three friends. Those three friends that stood that summon days without saying a word. But then after the summon day, they spoke up. Every one of them came straight out from the hill. Let me tell you, there are folks that are just trusting that you're not going to make it. Folks trusting that just a little small thing come your way and you're going to break it. You got to let the devil know you're a liar. For as great as he, repeat after me, great as he, that's what they mean. Then he is in the world. For no weapon formed against me, shall prosper. And every tongue that rises up against me in judgment shall be condemned. For I am the blessed of the Lord through every trial, every tribulation. The Lord is going to give me strength to overcome, to be a victor in him. I am a victor through Christ. I am a victor through Christ. I am a victor through Christ. Amen. 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 Let's give the Lord a hand, praise. We are victors. We are victors. We are victorious. No weapon. No weapon. Nothing Satan has. Nothing he creates can overcome us. We have a battle. We in warfare. We have a battle. But the good news is that we don't have to worry about fighting in it. Like he told Jehoshaphat, stand still and watch the salvation of the Lord. For the battle is not yours. Tell somebody next to you, the battle is not mine, but the Lord's. I need not to fight. I need not to worry. I need not to be distressed. Because through him, I'm already victorious. It's a fixed fight. And through Christ. I'm victorious. Amen. 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 Let's give the Lord a hand, please. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. 